Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the Blessed Messages for You channel. It's with great joy that we meet again to share God's Word and strengthen our faith together. Before we dive into the powerful message that the Lord has prepared for us today, I'd like to make a special request to each of you. If you're not yet part of our family here on YouTube, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel right now. Your subscription isn't just a click, but a commitment to spreading the gospel and crucial support for us to continue bringing God's word to all corners of the digital world. Also, if this content touches your heart, don't hesitate to leave a like on this video. This simple gesture helps us reach more people with Christ's transformative message. And please share your thoughts, experiences, and prayers in the comments. Your participation enriches our community and helps us grow together in faith. Remember, every interaction, every comment, every share is a seed planted in God's kingdom. Today, my dear ones, we're going to address a theme that deeply touches the heart of every human being, fear. How many times have you felt paralyzed in the face of life's challenges? How many opportunities have you let pass by out of fear of the unknown? How many sleepless nights have you spent tormented by worries and anxieties? Fear is a powerful emotion capable of robbing us of peace, joy, and even the ability to fully live the purpose God has for our lives. But I have good news for you. It doesn't have to be this way. There is a divine antidote to fear, a heavenly remedy that can completely transform our perspective and our reality. This antidote is unwavering faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Our journey today will be guided by an incredibly powerful passage of scripture found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. In it, God Almighty himself speaks directly to our hearts, saying, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Pause for a moment and let these words penetrate deep into your spirit. These are not mere words of comfort or empty promises. They are declarations from the Creator of the universe, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, personally addressed to each of us, His beloved children. Over the next few minutes, we'll explore together how we can transform this divine promise into a living, pulsating reality in our daily lives. Fear is an emotion that we all know intimately. It can manifest in various ways in our lives. Fear of the uncertain future, fear of failure in our endeavors, fear of rejection in our relationships, fear of change when we're called to step out of our comfort zone. Sometimes it presents itself as a subtle feeling of unease, a discomfort we can't name. At other times, it emerges as an overwhelming dread that completely paralyzes us, preventing us from taking the next step. Regardless of its intensity or form, fear has the power to divert us from the abundant and victorious path that God has laid out for each of us. But why do we feel fear? At its most basic essence, fear is a natural response of our body and mind to real or perceived threats. It's a survival mechanism given to us by God in His infinite wisdom. Fear, in its proper measure, helps us avoid dangers and keeps us alert. However, when we allow fear to overstep its bounds and begin to control our decisions and actions, it transforms into a prison that prevents us from experiencing the abundant life that Jesus promised when He said, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10.10 the Apostle Paul, in his second letter to Timothy, brings us a powerful revelation about the nature of the spirit that God has given us. He writes, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 NKJV This passage reveals a fundamental truth that we need to engrave in our hearts. Paralyzing fear the one that robs us of peace and prevents us from moving forward, does not come from God. On the contrary, our Heavenly Father has equipped us with powerful spiritual tools to face and overcome our deepest fears. Reflect with me, power, love, and a sound mind. 
These are the characteristics of the spirit that God has given us. The power to face any situation, not in our own strength, but in the strength that comes from above. The love that casts out all fear, as the Apostle John teaches us. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. 1 John 4.18 And a sound mind, or as other translations bring, self-discipline, which allows us to maintain calm and mental clarity even in the midst of life's storms. Now, let's return to our main passage in Isaiah. When God says, fear not, he's not simply giving us an order or superficial advice. He's reminding us of who he is and who we are in relation to him. For I am with you, declares the Lord. This is not a vague promise of company or an abstract feeling of presence. It is the concrete and unshakable guarantee of the constant and active presence of the creator of the universe in every aspect of our lives. Imagine for a moment, the God who placed the stars in the sky, who with a word separated the waters of the sea, who with a breath gave life to the first man, who with his power raised the dead, is by your side at this very moment. He is not distant, observing your life from afar with indifference. He is here, now, with you, interested in every detail of your existence, ready to intervene on your behalf. Now, the question that naturally arises is, how can we apply these wonderful truths in our daily lives? How do we transform this promise into a living reality that frees us from fear and enables us to live a life of abundant faith? First, it is crucial to recognize that overcoming fear with faith is a process, a journey of spiritual growth. It's not something that happens overnight like magic. It's a journey of continuous growth and increasing trust in God. A fundamental step in this journey of overcoming fear is to nourish our faith daily with God's Word. In Romans 10, 17, the Apostle Paul teaches us, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the Word about Christ. The more we saturate ourselves with God's promises, the more we meditate on His Word, the more our faith grows and strengthens. As a direct result, our fears diminish and lose their power over us. Establish a daily habit of reading, studying, and meditating on the scriptures. Don't just read superficially, but allow God's word to penetrate deeply into your heart. Memorize verses that speak of God's protection, care, and love. When fear tries to settle in your mind, you will have an arsenal of divine truths to combat it. In addition to studying the word, Prayer plays a vital role in our battle against fear. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, we receive precious instruction. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer is not just a religious ritual or a spiritual obligation. It is a direct and personal connection with our Heavenly Father, an opportunity to pour out our fears, anxieties, and worries at His feet and receive in return His supernatural peace. When we feel overwhelmed by fear, we should make prayer our first response, not our last resort. Open your heart to God with total honesty. He is not surprised by our fears or doubts. On the contrary, he invites us to bring them to him. As a loving father comforts his frightened child, our heavenly father is ready to wrap us in his arms of love and dispel our fears with his presence. Another crucial aspect of overcoming fear with faith is fellowship with other believers. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, we are encouraged and let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. God never intended for us to face our battles alone. He has placed us in a spiritual family, the church, where we can find support, encouragement, and strength. When we share our struggles and victories with our brothers and sisters in Christ, we discover that we are not alone in our battles. 
we find strength in unity, wisdom in mutual counsel, and encouragement in each other's testimonies of faith. Don't isolate yourself when fear knocks at your door. Seek the fellowship of the saints, allow yourself to be vulnerable and transparent, and let the body of Christ minister to you in your time of need. It's important to remember that having faith doesn't mean the total absence of fear or doubts. Even the great men and women of God in the Bible experienced moments of fear and uncertainty. Think of Moses hesitating before the monumental task of leading the people of Israel out of Egypt. Remember Elijah, who even after experiencing a spectacular victory over the prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, fled in fear from Jezebel's threat. Consider Gideon, who needed multiple confirmations before accepting God's call to deliver Israel. What distinguishes these heroes of faith is not the absence of fear, but their decision to trust God despite the fear. They chose to take a step of faith even when their feelings screamed otherwise. And that's exactly what God calls us to do. Faith is not denying the existence of fear, but choosing to trust God in the midst of fear. Sometimes, fear can make us feel that we are alone in our struggle, that no one else understands what we're going through. But the Apostle Peter reminds us in his first epistle, chapter 5, verse 9, Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. This is a powerful truth that we need to internalize. We are not alone in our battles. We are part of a global community of believers facing similar challenges. When we look at the history of the church, we see countless examples of men and women who faced overwhelming fears with unwavering faith. Think of the early Christians who faced terrible persecutions but remained firm in their faith. Remember the missionaries who left the comfort of their homes to bring the gospel to unknown lands, overcoming the fear of the unknown. These examples inspire us and remind us that with God, we can overcome any obstacle. As we grow in our faith and learn to trust God more, we begin to see fear from a completely different perspective. Instead of paralyzing us, it can become an opportunity to witness God's power and faithfulness in action. Each situation of fear overcome becomes a living testimony of God's grace in our lives a story we can share to encourage others who are going through similar struggles. King David, a man who faced numerous dangers and challenges throughout his life, from facing Goliath to fleeing from Saul and dealing with rebellions in his own kingdom, wrote in Psalm 34 verse 4, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Notice carefully. David doesn't say that God removed all the frightening situations from his life. Instead, he declares that he was delivered from the power that fear had over him. This is a crucial distinction that we need to understand. God doesn't always remove the circumstances that cause us fear, but he always offers his presence, his power, and his peace in the midst of those circumstances. When we internalize this truth, we experience a freedom that transcends our external circumstances. We can face situations that would have paralyzed us before because we know that we are not alone and that the God of the universe is by our side. This deliverance from the power of fear allows us to live in a completely different way. We are no longer slaves to fear, constantly reacting to circumstances and letting our decisions be dictated by our fears. Instead, we become sons and daughters of God, freed to live boldly, following the divine call for our lives. As Paul declares in Romans 8 verse 15, The spirit you received does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. When we live in this freedom, we are able to follow God's call for our lives without hesitation. We can take steps of faith that before seemed impossible or too frightening. We can love more deeply, even at the risk of being hurt. We can serve more generously, even when it means stepping out of our comfort zone. We can share our faith boldly, even facing the possibility of rejection. 
In short, we can live more fully, experiencing the abundant life that Jesus promised. As we conclude our reflection today, I want to challenge each of you to take a concrete step of faith this week. Identify a specific area of your life where fear has been holding you back from moving forward. It might be a relationship that needs to be restored, but you fear rejection. It might be a dream that God has placed in your heart, but you've been putting off out of fear of failure. Or perhaps it's a call from God that you've been hesitating to follow out of fear of the unknown. Whatever that fear is, I encourage you to bring it before God in prayer. Be honest about your feelings, your doubts, and your concerns. Then, declare the promise of Isaiah 41 verse 10 over that specific situation. Personalize it. Say, Lord, I will not fear, for you are with me. You are my God. You will strengthen me, help me, and uphold me with your righteous right hand. Then, take a step, no matter how small, in the direction God is calling you. Remember, faith without works is dead. Don't wait until the fear completely disappears to act. Act in faith, trusting that God will fulfill His word. And as you take that step of faith, always keep in mind the promise of Philippians 1 verse 6. Being confident of this, that He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God not only initiates the work in our lives, He carries it to completion. This includes the process of freeing us from fear and empowering us to live by faith. Before we close, I'd like to express my deepest gratitude to each of you for dedicating your time to reflect on God's Word with us today. If this message touched your heart in any special way, if you have a testimony of how God helped you overcome fear with faith, or if you need prayer in any specific area, please share in the comments below. Your stories and prayer requests might be exactly the encouragement or call to intercession that someone needs to hear today. Don't forget to subscribe to the Blessed Messages for You channel if you haven't already. By subscribing and hitting the notification bell, you ensure that you won't miss any of our future videos filled with inspiring and encouraging messages from God's Word. And if this content was a blessing to you, please don't hesitate to click the like button and share it with your friends, family, and brothers and sisters in Christ. Together, we can spread the message of hope, faith, and victory over fear to a world that so desperately needs to hear the good news of the gospel. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. May you experience a new dimension of freedom as you learn to trust God more deeply and live by faith, overcoming all your fears. Until the next video, always remember, fear not, for the Lord your God is with you. He will strengthen you, help you, and uphold you with His righteous right hand. Move forward with courage, knowing that the God of the impossible is by your side. God bless you richly, today and always.